Good morning, everybody. This is Charles Barnett from Apostolic Gatherings Network. And I hope everybody is having a good uh, Sunday. Uh, we're in the month of May right now. And uh, I have uh, a very good word from the Lord for us today. I want to just get right into it. Um, first of all, I just want to thank those of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel and those of you who watch me live on Facebook and those of you who uh, um, are a believer in what God is doing through me, what he's saying through me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for taking to heart what the Lord has been doing in this end time hour. Uh, share it. Share it because it's it's not just for us. It's for the whole world. This prophetic ministry, this apostolic ministry is for the whole world. So the Lord was showing me something. And it's very, very profound. And uh, uh, matter of fact, it's it kind of it, it overwhelmed my prayer, my intercession. Um, but the, just for title sake. What's desperately needed now? What's desperately needed now, not just in the body of Christ, but the whole world. We're going to cover it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to read a story in the Old Testament. And uh, it's amazing to what God has uh, been revealing and showing to us of things that we just so commonly pass over or something that was huge in times past that has almost become uh, unknown or hidden or lost, uh, you know, as God is just showing us great things of what he's doing. But let's talk about what's desperately needed now. What's desperately needed now for everybody, that's you and me included. Second Chronicles, we're going to go. I'm going to read it off my uh, laptop, but it's it's in the Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. By the time Rehoboam had secured his kingdom and was strong again, he and all Israel with him had virtually abandoned God and his ways. In Rehoboam's fifth year, because he and the people were unfaithful to God, Shishak, king of Egypt, invaded as far as Jerusalem. He came with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 cavalry and soldiers from all over, the Egyptian army, including Libyans and Sukites and Ethiopians. They took the fortress cities of Judah and advanced as far as Jerusalem itself. Then the prophet Shemaiah, accompanied by the leaders of Judah, who had retreated to Jerusalem before Shishak, came to Rehoboam and said, God's word, thus saith the Lord, you abandon me, you abandon me, now I abandon you, to Shishak, the leaders of Israel and the king were repented. They humbled themselves and said, God is right in doing this to us. When God saw that they humbly repented, the word of God came to Shemaiah, the prophet, and he said, because they are humble, I will not destroy them. I'll give them a break, a small deliverance. I won't use Shishak to express my wrath against Jerusalem. What I will do, though, is make them Shishak's subjects. They will be his slaves. They'll learn the difference between serving me and serving human kings and serving human leaders, human rulers. Now, in this lesson here, we have the king of Israel... And he's coming to power. 
He sets up his own kingdom, his own agenda, and in doing so, he forsakes the Lord. He forsakes the word of God. He forsakes the spirit of God. He forsakes everything. He forsakes everything that God is about and does whatever his heart desires. And the Bible says that all of Israel followed him. So they all backslid. They left the Lord to do their own thing. Yes, in the eyes of the world. Yes, in the eyes of the surrounding countries and and pagans and other uh, nationalities, they still saw them as the people of God, but they had left God. The Israelites backslid. So God, in his wrath, rose up Shishak, the king of, uh, of uh, Egypt, and sent him to punish Israel, to punish Rehoboam. And there were outer cities that were fortress cities that were protecting Jerusalem. And Shishak laid waste those cities so that the other leaders and rulers retreated to Jeroboam, I mean to Rehoboam, and they said, hey, this guy has devastated us. We're in big trouble. And God sent a prophet. And the prophet met all of them and they're all convened together because they're with the king saying what do we do we're gonna die this this man this Egypt is overtaking us they're destroying us you know and the Egypt is a type of the world uh, 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 the uh, sinful mankind that does whatever he wants to do apart from God it was overtaking the Israelites and the prophet shows up, the prophet Shem, Shemiah. Let me see, what's that? How do you say his name? Yeah, Shemiah, Shemiah, Shemiah. And he says, thus saith the Lord, because you have abandoned me, I've abandoned you. In other words, I'm letting this happen to you because you have left me. Yes, you're the people of God. Yes, you're the ruler. Yes, you're a uh, 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 powerful nation but you have left me and because you have left me to do your own thing he says i'm leaving you to be destroyed by egypt the king of egypt and its army it's going to overtake you and destroy you thus saith the lord so one good thing that rehoboam did and this is what is desperately needed right now the lord is lord was showing me this is what's desperately needed is that we desperately need to humble ourselves and repent. That's what they did. Rehoboam and his leaders, they humbled and repented. Yes, we know they were afraid. Yes, we know they had no other recourse. And us in America, we're not at that point where God is our only recourse. We still are rich. We still are powerful. We still have our rights and all these things. And God is on the back burner. Unfortunately, that's the way the Ecclesia, the body of Christ, the church is treating him also because we have our own thing. We have our own leaders. We have our own bylaws. We have our, we, you know, uh, we're like Laodicea. We're rich. We're, we're good. We got everything going on and we don't realize that we're blind. We're naked. Uh, we're almost vomit out of God's mouth because we're lukewarm, right? Well, we need to come to that point and we're, re we're about to reach that point. But they were at that point where they had no other recourse but to turn to God. So they repented and they humbled themselves. And that's what's desperately needed now is for us to humble ourselves and repent and pray before God. And we need a prophetic move. And God is giving us a prophetic move. Because only through apostles and prophets is God going to come and bring uh, 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 to light to those in high places those in leadership, those that are ruling, right? Yes, God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. prophesy. I covered that last week. And he's going to reach all the little nooks and crannies in the body of Christ and all the people in the world that's, you know, you know the in a, in a personable way and not in a general way. So that's why well, the church is needed. The body of Christ is needed to go all over the place to reach everybody. But God will use these certain ministries like this prophet to go and reach those that 
are so high and mighty that nobody can touch them, where they're untouchable almost, right? And he goes over to them and says, hey, this is the way it's going to go. Because you have left God, God is leaving you. Woo, that's a scary place to be. But that is what is necessary. It's desperately needed right now is where God can really bring a prophetic move to rebuke us to the point where we will repent and humble ourselves before God so that we can receive mercy and grace from God instead of the full frontal force of the wrath of God. Because that's what the king of Egypt was. He was the wrath of God to come against the rebellion of a rebellious people of God. But God heard their cries and spoke to that same prophet and said, hey, they're sorry. They're really repenting. They're humbling themselves. So here's what I'm going to do for them. I'm not going to have them totally annihilated and wiped out. They're still going to be brought under, under bondage because of their sin. He says, but because of that, they're going to learn something. They're going to learn a lesson. And this lesson they desperately need to learn is that though I'm going to give them a small deliverance, though I'm going to have a remnant for them, he says, they will learn the most valuable lesson ever in life that they need to learn, that all of us need to learn, is that it is better to serve God than to be oppressed and suppressed by earthly kings. And they were going to be a slave to the king of Egypt. And that was going to teach them a lesson. And that is our problem. We want to serve ourselves. And we want to serve other men and women that are catering to our entertainment, our lust, our desires, our own fulfillment. We look out for number one. And whatever agenda fits what we want, that's what we do. We support those people. We promote those people. And we serve those people. And God is saying we need to stop doing that and start serving God. We need to start serving Him. Our biggest mistake ever is when we stop serving God and we stop worshiping God and we stop obeying God. And when we do that, then... After a time of grace, his was five years, God will send wrath to rebuke us. Now here's what's desperately needed. Yes, God needs we, is desperately needed in our lives. But here's something that I need to bring forth that God is saying to us today. Is that we don't really realize when we study and read the Bible, we're trying so hard to understand it, mostly for Bible knowledge. When we should be trying to understand it, to understand God, to gain knowledge of God and how he thinks and how he works and what he's requiring of us so we can have a close relationship with him so we can know God. And this is something I'm going to show you here that a lot of people don't realize. I didn't know this myself, but now it, God is trying to reveal and show it to us so we can understand is that over 4,000 times in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, will say, saith the Lord, or thus saith the Lord. It's written in the Bible of prophetic messages. Over 4,000 times in the Bible, thus saith the Lord. Now, I've heard some preachers say to other preachers, don't say thus saith the Lord unless you know absolutely it's from the Lord. Well, a lot of people say that because they really don't understand God. And they don't understand prophetic messages. They don't even understand the prophet, apostolic prophetic uh, uh, giftings that God has and he sent forth. And that uh, in, I think they're trying to make thus saith the Lord holy. They don't realize that all, every part of God is holy. But what we don't realize is that there's thus saith the Lord more times than not. And that we have so many topical, allegorical, you know, uh, 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 outline preaching. And we hear so much preaching and teaching that we don't realize that what was more in the Bible than outlined doctrinal teaching was a thus saith the Lord. God had prophet after prophet and prophetess after prophetess going out and saying, a thus saith the Lord. It's mentioned over 4,000 times in the Bible. That's the common voice of God. 
The Lord has sent out countless prophetic messages throughout the history of mankind that has not even been recorded with ink and paper. How can we know this? Because that's just what's written. You're saying 4,000? Wow. So God really is into prophet. Yes, prophetic is what God is. He's the one that knows the beginning from the end. Hallelujah. Just to have regular basic teaching and preaching of the basic knowledge of the word is not enough. We need to know what thus saith the Lord because that is a fresh rima, a fresh prophetic word, an utterance, an oracle of the Lord. That's just what was written down 4,000 times. But there's thousands upon thousands, even millions of times when God has sent a prophetic messenger to give a thus saith the Lord that's not even written in the Bible. You might want to say, well, how do you know that? Well, here, let me show you something else. John, this is what the Apostle John wrote. John, chapter 21, verse 25. This is what else, as he ends, the last scripture of the book of John. It's after Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the beloved. He said, there are so many other things Jesus did. If they were all written down, each of them, one by one, I can't imagine a world big enough to hold such a library of books. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's a lot of signs, wonders, and miracles that Jesus did. There's a lot of preachings and prophecies that Jesus issued. And John is saying, he did so many more things. I imagine he said so many more things that they couldn't even... He says, if we were to chronolize and write down everything Jesus did in that three and a half years of his earthly ministry, we, didn't, we wouldn't have enough books to contain it. So what is that saying? If, there, if we have tons of signs, wonders, and miracles, tons of prophetic, thus saith the Lord's, and the Lord said this, and the Lord did that, it's just repeatedly, 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 so we can get it. And this, that's just a small scratch of what he's done and said throughout the history of mankind. How can we not need what has always been? What's desperately needed right now is God and his prophetic power, his prophetic utterance and his prophetic messengers to get a hold of us so that we can realize that we cannot survive without God. We cannot survive without obeying God, obeying his word and obeying the prompting of his spirit and thus saith the Lord. We can't do it without Prophetic messengers, your sons and your daughters, right? Visions and dreams, uh, things that come. The Bible says, without a vision, the people perish. That word vision means a prophetic revelation and guidance from God. It's not just a vision statement and a mission statement. No, it's talking about something prophetic, something coming from the divine power of God. What's desperately needed is we need to stop killing and stoning the prophets. We need to stop stifling the prophetesses and we need to open up our ears and humble ourselves and repent and obey what thus saith the Lord. What's desperately needed right now is God and his prophetic utterance coming to shake up everything that we've got going on because what's happening is we're letting Egypt, we're letting the world, we're letting the philosophies of this world, we're letting our culture and our environment, we're letting everything that's against God that's coming forth and overtaking this world, we're letting it overtake us also. It's influencing us. It's overtaking us. It's coming in and dominating us. And God is sending us prophetic, a rise of prophetic messengers led by apostles and prophets and the body of Christ is a prophetic move, thus saith the Lord, hallelujah, to wake us up and to pull us out of the death grip that the devil has us. He has us in. To give us a deliverance and to raise us up a mighty army following and obeying the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are powerless and destitute without God's prophetic guidance 
and supernatural miracles working through his divine sent messengers. We desperately need God, prophetic messengers, humility and repentance, and divine miraculous intervention to be victorious in the kingdom of God and to set and stamp our eternal presence and ticket to heaven where our mansion is waiting for us. When I was in intercession this morning and I was interceding to God and I was praying and I was making a personal prayer and some personal uh, uh, request to God and the Holy Ghost came upon me. The Holy Spirit f started flowing through me. I feel Holy Ghost even right now talking about it. And I started to speak in tongues and the Holy Ghost started to make intercession through me. And I, my hands were shaking and, and I was just moving in the Holy Ghost and I was just focused on God and letting the Holy Ghost pray through me, you know, because uh, uh, Romans chapter eight says, we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us, through us, according to his will. And as I'm praying and speaking in tongues and letting the Holy Ghost pray through me, the Holy Ghost started praying, CTD boss, CTD boss, CTD boss, CTD boss, CT boss, hallelujah. And I was just praying that, praying that, praying that, and it was coming with such power. And I don't know what God was doing. I was just subject. I was yielded. I was just letting the Lord pray through me. The Holy Spirit, Christ in us, the Holy Lord, was praying through me. I don't know how long. It, that didn't matter. All I know is that God was doing something through me and for me because I needed him because I'm obeying him above everything else because I can't do it without him. And after I finished praying and there was a great peace upon me, it just hit me. What did God just do? What did he do? What did God pray? Because I've never heard that before. So I started, I went online and started to try and find what CTD boss or CD boss means. And you know what I found? CT boss is a God that the Patagonians used to worship. That's right, in South America, Patagonia, they worship the God they called CT boss. CT boss is a demon. It's a demon that dominates people through dark magic, through witchcraft, and witches and warlocks worship this city boss. That was their god. And he dominated them through fear and death. And this is what he would attack people through his dark magic would bring people to fear him and he would dominate them because they were afraid of this God that through his dark magic and power, he would bring death upon them. And so it was all built on fear. And the Lord let me know that's what he was praying against. He was praying against a spirit that is attacking the body of Christ and is bringing fear and through his dark magic, through his witchcraft, and though it, you may not see witchcraft and stuff, but he's working through the systems of this world to deceive and cloud our minds, and that's a form of witchcraft. He uses it all. And the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a demon of city bus, but God has given us his spirit, the Holy Ghost, ha, Jesus Christ, it's Christ and us the hope of glory. Hallelujah. He has given us a spirit of love and a power and a sound mind. My beloved brethren, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the Holy Ghost was praying against city bus this morning. Hallelujah. Because many people are giving in to the deception of this world. The dark magic of the demonic forces that are, the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one, the Bible says. They're, they're leaving God to do whatever else is going on out there to get whatever they want and whatever they need. And they're being ruled by city boss. And they're afraid that they're going to die without getting theirs. And then they're dominated. 
They're dominated by fear instead of by faith. And this is, and I don't know the whole extent of this prayer. That's all I know. All I know is I'm going to keep praying on, I'm going to keep praying about it and let the Holy Ghost flow and pray. And, and, I, and you know what? This city boss be destroyed and be broken, oh, uh, 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 get, coming against my family, coming against your family, coming against the body of Christ. We destroy city boss in the name of Jesus Christ uh, because the spirit of God is against you, because the spirit of God, Jesus Christ, is Lord on the throne and he is triumphant in battle and victorious. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And this is exactly what we need. We don't need another dull dry preaching or some uh, woo make you excited but something you've heard about before because you have Holy Ghost power no we need prophetic power to destroy the city bosses that are binding people and deluding people and 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 deceiving people and placing people under depression and fear and torment when we have Jesus Christ, who is the deliverer, the healer of broken hearts, uh, and though to make, set the captive free, and that we can be free indeed. The most desperate thing we need today is we need a prophetic move of the Lord God Almighty, our Savior Jesus Christ in our life. Stop rejecting God. Stop rejecting his prophets that he sends to you. Uh, the whole Bible and even things that God has said that's never recorded in the Bible is a thus saith the Lord. It has been since the beginning of mankind and it's going to be to the ending of mankind. In the millennial reign of Christ, after the rapture, after the Mar Mar Armageddon, there's going to be 1,000 reign of Christ right here on earth. And guess what? He's going to have a throne established over there in Israel. Yes, he is. And he's going to rule the world for 1,000 years. And he's going to sit on a throne. And it's going to be obedience to him and him alone. And a thus saith the Lord is going to be his mandates. So we need to get used to it now or we're not going to make it there uh, to enjoy his reign here. Thus saith the Lord. The most desperate need that we need right now. And some people, they think we don't need prophecy. We don't need the prophetic word. We already have the sure word of prophecy. Yes, we do. But this is just a springboard. This is just a basic knowledge. This is just a scratch of the surface. God has not stopped speaking. People say, well, we only need this. Now, you mean God? You mean God has gone mute? That's foolishness. That's not even that's not even scripture. Even the scripture says that he's going to prophesy more now than he ever did before. Why do you think John the revelator, the apostle John, got the revelation of Jesus Christ? To and that's a big thus saith the Lord, the entire book of Revelation. So what the Lord is trying to tell us today is that we're letting dark magic, we're letting deception, we're letting the world, we're letting Egypt, we're letting sin, we're letting Satan and all of his deception and his dark magic and his witchcraft, we're letting that overcome us and dominate us and destroy us and kill us all because we've left God. And we've left his mandates. We've left his prophetic, thus saith the Lord. We've left his messengers and he's sending them to us right now. And he's not going to stop so that we can repent and humble ourselves before God so that we can receive a deliverance from him. And that is the most desperate need of the hour right now. It's thus saith the Lord. Let's pray right now. In the name of Jesus, we unleash this prophecy. Because your prophetic word is a dictate. It's a mandate. Uh, it's a decree and it's a declaration coming straight from you and it will come to pass because it will not come back void because whatever you send it forth, it will perform the task because you are all powerful, all authority and God sitting on the throne. We unleash it in Jesus name. Ah, 
a river of the Holy Ghost that goes forth and will not come back void and will perform what it does, a river of the Spirit that none of us can pass over. In Jesus' name, be changed, be delivered, eyes be open, ears be open, heart and mind be open, be set free, be delivered, be delivered from this world, be delivered from Satan, be delivered from sin. In Jesus' name, I prophesy it and speak it and declare it over you and over me, over my family, over your family, and as many as will hear what thus saith the Lord, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! God has prayed against you. The Spirit has prayed against you and your days are numbered, and you're destroyed, and your influence is broken in Jesus' name. Because Jesus Christ is Lord of all in heaven and in earth, and I proclaim it to you this day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. You be blessed. Share this. Subscribe on YouTube. Share it on Facebook. Share it, share it, share it. Watch it again. Pray. You and I have got to pray, humble ourselves and pray and repent and receive a prophetic deliverance from God. God bless you. You be blessed. This is Charles Barnett, an apostolic prophetic minister in the service of God Almighty Jesus Christ, um, spreading apostolic gatherings, networking all over the world in Jesus name. God bless you. You be blessed.